So it's May 24th, 2009. Yeah, it is. Yeah, May 24th. It is. All right, so it's Ida and Tori. You originally got into this because of your son, right? Oh, yeah. I read an ad that the Cramptons had put in about the dangers of cults or whatever it was, and uh, I answered it. And I said, do you look at Scientology as a cult, or am I just a doting mother? (laughs) That's a good question. And she wrote back, and she said, you're not a doting mother. It is a cult. If you'd like to talk about it, come see us. So I flew down from San Francisco, and I, she met me at the airport. And from then on, we were fast friends. I bet. And she was such a worker. Her and her husband were probably the hardest workers of anybody I ever knew to expose, not just Scientology, but they had a daughter who had joined the Love Family, which was a real nasty group. And they worked hard and long to get her out of that outfit. So then they did such a good job of it that everybody was coming to them. They, I'd go down and spend a week with them, and you couldn't believe the number of people that came for help to the I, Cramptons. They were I two great people. That. And they never turned anybody away. I don't know how many dinners she quick fixed for some kid that come that hadn't eaten for a week. And they were in some group and and couldn't show up with any money, and the group wouldn't have anything to do with them, so they'd come to her for help. And back then, like now, people can type in the Internet. We're also used to to Google, and you can type in Scientology, and their stuff comes up, but the second stuff that comes up is critical information, right? Yeah. But back then, there was nothing, We didn't have anything, and you didn't, you really didn't dare stick your nose out too far because they would come after you. Right. And really... Uh, and sue you, right? It was Well, it wasn't just that. They, they, they did a lot of dirty tricks. I can't even count the dirty tricks that were pulled on me. By like signing. the fair game oh, stuff? Oh, you better know it. I used to have, when I moved here, there used to be people come here and pick up my in front of my house. Really? Oh, yeah. When I first moved, Yeah, when I first moved here. I don't oh. know any Balsa would do. And then Muriel Dufresne from over at the cult, she came and went to all the neighbors and told them I was housing a killer. Keith Hansen was, uh, Hansen was staying here with a me. Killer. And <laughs> picketing. And she yeah. come and she went to all the neighbors, all, and they said they didn't think I would have anybody in their house that was a killer. Well, believe me, she's got one. And then they'd show a, a distorted picture of Keith to where he looked just like a absolute gangster. And they made the trip around here, and if I hadn't had good neighbors, they probably would have said, this woman's got to go. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but that was their intention, you know, but, that was their... But back then, pretty much wasn't it like you wrote letters, right, oh, to yeah. congressmen and when things I like When I started, that? when I first, when my son first got involved... I couldn't, I used to keep a record. I don't know if I even have it anymore. But I wrote to congressmen, I wrote to senators, I wrote to governors and mayors. Anybody I'd see a name in the paper, I would jot it down. And it, I had Bless to go to the library to get their addresses because we didn't have computer knowledge right. then. Right. And I'd go and I'd find their address and I said, have you any idea what this outfit's all about? And what would they say? Sometimes I'd get an answer. Most times I didn't. Didn't you, you were in touch with the guy that went down to Jonestown. What was his name? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was uh, Um, Leo Ryan. Leo J. Ryan. Well, how I met Leo was, uh, I never actually met him in person, but I knew his sister. But he wrote to you, right? Oh, yeah. His sister, uh, she went to a Cult Awareness Network meeting, and that's where I met her, and her son... Uh, who was going to a Jesuit school. I mean, he was going to a Catholic school. And one of them there told him that he should look into Scientology. So he got all wrapped up in Scientology right off of the bat. And this really shook her up. So she, when she's back east, she talks to Leo about it. And she said, Leo, you should look into some of this. And I met her at a 
one of the cult awareness meetings and started a conversation through letters with her. And that's, she said, you should write to my brother. So I wrote to Leo and I happened to be in his district because I was living up near San Francisco then. And he wrote right back and we had a meeting as soon as he got back from Jonestown, he was coming up, back up in his area to do some speeches, and he wanted to see Patty Hearst because she was in his district, and he was gonna stop and we were gonna go have lunch. And then when he was killed, I was absolutely devastated. I bet. In fact, I ended up, I went to a psychiatrist afterwards, and I couldn't deal with it. I just right. couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, and finally, my husband said, I, you got to do something. You can't sit around like this. He said, you're going to get sick. I said, I think I'm already sick. <laughs> so I went to this guy. He was super guy. And uh, I guess I went to him two or three times. His name was Dr. Kansky. He was sharper than attack. And actually, we kind of become friends through all of the sure. conversation. He was a good psychiatrist. But anyway, he told me, or he taught me, how to deal with the loss of a child. And when That's a tremendous. kid goes in Scientology, you've lost them. And I just couldn't come to terms with losing this kid. I had when I was young. I was 19, I think, when he was born, or 18. And we always were so close. We had such a good relationship, especially after his father died. And he helped with his brother, and you know, it was a real good relationship. And then all of a sudden, this is over. You either kiss Scientology or you're done. And I couldn't do that. I just, it, to me, it was the most evil outfit I ever saw in my life. All I could read about was that it broke up families. It didn't keep families together like religion is supposed to do. It broke them up. It's so true. I went after everybody I could. And there's a lot of other families who've been broken up also. Oh, yeah. There it. were just so many. And the more that I'd go to these uh uh, uh, cult awareness meetings, the one up in San Francisco was a little bit sophisticated. If you didn't have a Mooney in the family, they didn't really pay much attention. Oh, I don't think Scientology is really a cult. I said, then have a kid join one and you'll wow, find out. Yeah. There were two or three lawyers there that had lost kids to the Moonies and You'd have thought that was the only cult in the whole damn country. And here was people losing to Krishna's and God only knows who all. Right. The Love family, there was a half a dozen other ones. So I didn't fit in with that group very good. That's where I met Ford Green's mother. And she was the best one in the whole group, to listen at least. And uh, they just thought the Moonies were the only one that was ever bothering anybody. Right. So, and then one man, he had the guts to say, well, prove to me Scientology is a cult. I said, have your kid join. <laughs> then you'll know. Yeah. I can understand someone getting involved in something, and especially when they use, they had such a good method of indoctrinating you, and then the method of keeping you. Right. This was, uh, uh, I can see young, and, and not you know, they didn't pick up the crop off the street. They got the good guys. They got people that were intelligent. They got people that were good, that would contribute to society. Right. And these are the ones that they got a hold of. Mm -hmm. And it, that's what really bugged me, worse than anything, because they didn't go down on Skid Row and pick up people that needed help. They got the kids that were really prime people that were good students and, and would contribute to society. Be mayors, be governors. I mean, these people that they got and screwed up their lives would have been somebody. Could have been somebody, That's yeah. That's right. Yeah. Ronnie was very honest and... Uh, Your son. Yeah, he was just a real good kid. And my other son was one you... You had to go to school with. The 
shape him up every now and then. But Ronnie never had any of those problems. He was a prize student, got very good grades, and he loved to read. And But he was a believer, and when they got a hold of him, he became a real believer, broke up his marriage. Did he ever write a disconnection letter to you? Yeah. yeah really? I got, yeah, I got one of those. I don't know where it is. I, get, I think it's on the Internet. And don't you think it's ridiculous the way they say that's the same as shunning? Well, it isn't. It's worse than shunning. It's worse than shunning. I think uh, there are, of course, I have no use for the Jehovah's that shun their families either. Right. No, I, I, agree. I just really, when they come here, they get a speech. I invite them in, ask them to sit down, and I lay them low. <laughs> <because> <laughs> I really You're the do. best at that, too. I well, I really are. do. I make a, First, I say, if you don't salute the flag, I can't talk to you. Well, we, we don't really believe, believe in saluting. I say, well, come in, sit down, and I'll tell you why you ought to salute the flag. <laughs> they I don't know. come here anymore. They got my house marked, and they, they won't come here anymore at all. <laughs> I always got a kick out of talking to them, you know. <laughs> it just was kind of broke up the day. <laughs> But I wrote to senators and governors and mayors and everybody I could find. If their name was in the paper, man, they got a letter from me. And you know what? That is still not. great to this day. If pe people out there that are going, what can I do to help? That what Ida has done oh, is like great it. to this day. Oh. Letters, I think it's, I think they in, in Washington they consider one letter is equal to 100 people. Well, I write. I still write once in a while, not as often as I should. But the ones that gets me, that just shut the door and say, oh, it's all right, it'll go away. This outfit's never going to go away. Yeah. You know, they got enough people where they're not going to go away. And when they get a hold of a guy like Cruz, who's really a nice guy, and they get a hold of him and use him, Here's all these young star-struck kids right. over Tom Cruise. Well, that's better than getting 25 people like you or me. Mm. Because Cruise talks. He talks to the young people, and they have no clue what he's involved in. Right. None. And who would think this guy was some dummy to get involved? I was at the Flag Land Base before... I was before they did this event. He was in Scientology, but under the radar, like no one was supposed to know yeah. or talk about it. Yeah. We were not supposed to mention his name. And then he, they had a big event. He came out. He said, "I'm Tom Cruise. I've gotten trained as an auditor. You should get trained. Everyone yeah. there now. You all should." Yeah. And that's when he became. And we were in, and we all left and went. Somebody handled him. Yeah. Right. Somebody got a hold. And of he's him. he's never been the same. Well, since. it's too bad because. I haven't even a clue how many young people he would have encouraged. But he didn't discourage anybody, and that's right. the sad part. I mean, Yeah, it, they need to look at both sides. That's yeah. the thing. And that, yeah. that's the great thing about the Internet, and even what you've started and all the people with you and before you. There's tons of people that yeah. the people on the Internet don't even know about oh, yeah. that are real troopers. I mean, because those old days were hardcore. You had to be really courageous, I think, well, to, it's to not take only a that, stand. They come after you. And, that's what I mean. And uh, they wrote letters when I was up in Sunnyvale, and I was writing about them. I wrote to the city council when they had these meetings, and I'm seeing these suckers are getting bought by this outfit. And right. I'd write letters to them, and they picketed my house. They started writing letters to all my neighbors there because <laughs> I was working them then just as much as now. Right. And, uh, well, I started in on the minute I found out who they were. And when my son went in, and it ended up breaking up his family, and he had a beautiful wife, two nice children, they had everything in the world going for him. He had a remarkably good business. She was a, a systems analyst working. The kids were healthy. And this just shot the whole thing. Because she, she didn't join. want to go in, right? Oh, she wasn't going to join. She said, yeah. I went down there and looked around at those people. She said, they got goofy eyes. <laughs> she says, I'm not going. <laughs> she says, there's no way. I often sit now and I wonder, what the hell would I have done with my life if my son hadn't joined Scientology? 
But one thing the son gave me was something to think about. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And do something about it. Well, I couldn't. My dad would have just turned over in his grave if I'd have just sat around and not tried to. Right. To do something. You know, that's. I feel the same about my father. Yeah. You know, he, my father passed away when I was 22. Yeah. And when I woke, started to wake up, I could feel him there. You yeah. know, it was that courage that he gave me as a little kid. And it was like, come on, yeah. do something. Well, my dad said to me one time, you know, when you look at something, and you look it over real good, and you know, well, it's damn dead wrong. And he said, you sit on your fanny, and you don't try to do something about it. He said, now that's what I call a sin. So I thought, well, I've done enough bad sins in my life, I better not add one more. <laughs> and that's really 90% of what he was telling me. Totally. And, of course, he died long before Ronnie got involved in this. I can't even imagine what he would have done because he just really was a fighter, and he would have just... Yeah, had... it would have been interesting to have our fathers meet. Like, yeah. my father kind of said the same thing. Because he, I grew up with my two older brothers, yeah. and there were always some bullies around, and my dad said, look, here's the deal. Bottom line, if people sit down at the table with you, it doesn't matter whether they're with you or against you. As long as they're willing to talk or even argue, as long as they're willing to sit down at the table, that's okay. The only people to watch out for are the bullies because they will never sit down at the table oh, with yeah. you and talk. Well, he's and I thought guy. about Osa because I was working with them at the time, and I thought these guys will never sit down at the table and, and talk. talk with anybody. With yeah. anybody. Yeah. And that was part of a big part of my waking up was like thinking about my dad and thinking about these people won't sit down and yeah. talk. Well, I know, Ida, a ton of people would like to tell you thank you, and I want to give you a hug, <laughs> well, honestly. Thank you so much. Well, you, it's you've been You've done fun. a fantastic good for tons and tons of people, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Well, the only thing I wonder is what would I have done with my life if he hadn't have joined the cult? I would have been think different. About that. I would have missed meeting some of the nicest darn people you ever knew. And, and I, I really, I never would have met them. I hear you. And if anybody would have come talking about it, I would have said, you got to be nuts. <laughs> that doesn't happen in our country. Yeah, right. You know, mm -hmm. I really, it's I would have been as strong against anybody even thinking this could mm -hmm. happen. I hear you. Well, the hard way to learn is to have a kid join. My dad always said, don't sit around whining do something right well you've done it and i just never forgot that